When I first started writing my script for my one month later review of the iPhone 17 Pro, which is honestly a phone that I've really enjoyed using, I got to the software section and ended up inadvertently blabbing on for several pages about all the issues that I've had with the software. But it kind of gave the review this overall negative vibe, which didn't actually line up with my feelings on the phone. So I thought it probably makes more sense to create a separate video unpacking all the issues because really they're issues with iOS 26 in general, not just the iPhone 17 Pro. So with that being said, here is everything wrong with iOS 26. First things first, I actually did a separate iOS issues video earlier this year, which covered all of the much longer standing issues that I've had with iOS for several years now. And I don't wanna rehash any of the issues covered in that video in this one. So feel free to check that out using the link up in the cards. But as a quick summary, here are the issues listed in that video that are still present today. So the keyboard's autocorrect is still awful. There's still no clipboard functionality. We still can't disable the dock and the app library is still a hot mess. Oh, and of course, the biggest feature that I've been wanting Apple to implement for years now, a universal back gesture, that's of course still nowhere to be found. Again, if you want a much more detailed version of those issues, then check out that video as mentioned. But I will say there are a few issues from that video that I feel like have actually been slightly improved this time around. The first big one is spam messages and calls. This has seen a huge improvement with iOS 26, thanks in particular to the new call screening functionality, but also just better spam protection in general. I've also been appreciating the notification system a little more. Now sure, it's still not as good as what you get on Pixel or Samsung phones, for example, but believe it or not, almost every other Android skin now no longer shows you unread notifications on your lock screen after you unlock the phone. And so the fact that Apple at least shows any notifications labeled as time sensitive on the lock screen for an hour after you receive them, that has actually been a welcome change. The lack of a vibrate toggle also hasn't bothered me as much this time around because I now just leave the haptic set to always on. And when the phone's in this standby mode at night, I'm pretty sure the haptics get switched off or at least I haven't noticed them. And even the app library, which I know I just said hasn't been addressed, which it hasn't, but it also hasn't bothered me as much anymore either because now I've just gotten into the habit of swiping down on my home screen and using the search functionality to open an app that doesn't live on my home screen instead. So that's the update on all the issues that I've mentioned in the past. Let's now tackle all the new issues that I've come across that I think could do with some refining. Let's start with the actual setup process. And I gotta say every year when I switch to a new iPhone, I'm always pretty baffled at just how slow it is. Now for context, I never transfer photos and videos whenever I switch phones, I only transfer everything else like messages, call logs, app data, settings and so forth. And by the way, whenever I switch to a new iPhone, I only transfer data from the previous iPhone that I was using, not an Android phone. So it's like definitely best case scenario for transferring data. But even with all that being the case, it always still takes such a long time, usually well and truly over an hour. Whereas on Android, I reckon the process is usually fully complete within 15 to 20 minutes max. The other thing that I found this time around in particular was that a lot of my iPhone's app data was somewhat broken after the transfer was complete. Like here's a screenshot of my banking app telling me that I had to completely uninstall then reinstall the app to get it to work. And this actually happened with a number of other apps as well. Now, to be fair, I actually have a very similar issue on Samsung phones because they have their own smart switch system implemented and it doesn't work properly with the latest versions of Android. But on every other Android phone that I've used and tested this year, so Pixel phones, OnePlus phones, Oppo phones, Nothing phones, and any other Android phone that uses the built-in Android transfer process, not one of those phones has had that issue. Also, I really think that Apple needs to get on board and match Android by offering seamless software updates. On an iPhone, you go ahead and download the software update, no issues there, but when it comes to actually installing the update, the phone has to completely switch itself off. This is archaic in my opinion, and there have actually been several times where I've accidentally triggered the update, even though I actually needed to use my phone for something, and then I've been left waiting while the update completes. For quite some time on Android, we've had a feature called Seamless Software Updates, where the phone is able to download and fully install the update in the background. And yes, you do still need to reboot the phone, but it's just as fast as a standard reboot process because the phone just switches the system partition to the new slot with the software update applied. Samsung phones have only just recently adopted this, but they are by far the best and quickest at this in my opinion, whereas Pixel phones, whilst they've had the feature for a long time, their updates still seem to take an age to download, but at least all Android phones let you install it in the background now, so you're not blocked from using your phone if need be. Then we get to the biggest issue with iOS 26 in my opinion, 
a distinct lack of polish. Sure, on the surface, iOS 26 is hands down the best looking software on any phone right now. And when you look at any given element, when it's static, it seems to be perfect. The issue is when it comes to actually interacting with the software. Here's just a few examples of what I'm talking about. Like when I swipe into the control center here, notice how all the toggles just fade in somewhat abruptly. It definitely feels like they should pop in or even just slide in, because I don't know why, but fading in just kind of feels a little janky. Or even when I long press and then close the Wi-Fi toggle, notice how the color just snaps back to white. Why can't it stay white? Or what about here on my lock screen? If I swipe up to view older notifications, notice how nothing happens for like half a swipe, but then once they do start appearing, they just kind of appear out of nowhere as does that notification center text above it. And here's another example in the music app. Notice how when I tap on these various bottom bar shortcuts, how the page just abruptly changes without any transition. Don't get me wrong, I freaking love the look of this liquid glass slider. And if you actually slide your finger across this bottom bar, it looks seriously incredible, but like the pages should definitely slide across, right? That would make it feel way more fluid than the current implementation. And this leads me into the next issue that iOS 26 currently very clearly prioritizes form over function. Like that Apple Music bottom bar is a great example. Sure, that glassy hover animation looks amazing, but we don't ever actually slide our finger on this bottom bar if we're actually wanting to navigate the app. We tap, right? Another really good example of this is the Safari app. Again, this updated bottom bar looks incredible and has all of these amazingly fluid animations, but now it's either two taps to open up a new tab like this, or you can do my preferred method, a swipe up and tap, but in reality, there should be a way to quickly open up a new tab with just one action. And like when you scroll down, sure, I love the look of this bottom bar minimizing into this beautiful little glass element down here. But when it does that, I can no longer quickly swipe between my tabs, which I actually like doing all the time. And so I've had to train myself to always scroll back up a little before then being able to swipe between my tabs. And yes, that's even the case with this bottom bar setting enabled instead. Now, my hope is that Apple will improve this distinct lack of intuitiveness in some sort of upcoming software release. The question really just is, how long will we have to wait? Now, this time around, not only did I use the Safari app instead of Google Chrome, but I also chose to use Apple's Mail app instead of Gmail. But oh my goodness, I did not realize how bad Apple's Mail app was when it comes to sending notifications in a timely manner. I've now just gotten used to opening up my various mail accounts on my computer and finding stacks of unread emails that I haven't been notified of on my phone. The only time they seem to come in reliably is when I place the phone on a charger, at which point they all come streaming in in one go. So Apple, you gotta fix your mail app. There's also a handful of other quirks worth mentioning, like the fact that I can't dismiss this transfer to new iPhone banner in the settings app. Like why is that even there in the first place? This iPhone 17 Pro is the new phone. Oh, and why does the settings app crash when I try and dive into the menu? And speaking of that, why are searches within the settings app so unreliable? Like sometimes a search works as expected, but then other times you just end up with literally no results from the most basic of searches. And then we come to possibly my biggest gripe with iOS 26, the complete regression that we've had in terms of home screen customization. You see, ever since Apple first introduced both widgets and the shortcuts app with iOS 14, which was a groundbreaking update as far as iOS customization was concerned, each subsequent software update after that just really continued to evolve the level of control that we had over the home screen to where it eventually became possible to create almost any home screen setup that we liked through the use of a few third-party apps. But with iOS 26 and Liquid Glass, setups like those that I've showcased on the channel in the past with these sort of custom transparent app icons and these super clean looking widgets and the dock being completely hidden from view, they became completely unrecreatable on iOS 26 thanks to the fact that Apple decided to add these little glassy and shimmery borders to every home screen element that literally move depending on how you hold your phone. So there's one simple fix for this. Apple needs to add a toggle that lets us disable these glassy highlights. That would allow us to create all of those transparent elements once more. And I believe that this would also allow us to use wallpapers that blend into the bottom area where the dock is, therefore giving the illusion that it's gone once more. Now in a recent update, they did actually add this liquid glass setting under the display settings that lets us switch the look between clear, which is what's on by default and tinted, which makes things well, less glassy, but as far as I can tell, this only really applies to notifications on the lock screen and maybe a few other very subtle UI areas, but at least at the time making this video, everything on the home screen still has that glassy border. 
But fingers crossed, this is a sign of things to come in a future software update. And then last, but absolutely not least, Siri. And look, this one is well covered in lots of videos by other creators, so I'll try not to harp on about it too much here, but when you compare the performance of Siri versus literally any other digital assistant, it's kind of wild how lacking it is. Like I tried over and over to ask Siri to suggest some 2025 film recommendations to watch in the lead up to the 2026 Academy Awards. And sometimes it didn't work at all. Then when it did work, it would use ChatGPT, which is fine. But then when it tried responding with ChatGPT, it kept trying to recommend 2024 films that were already nominated at the 2025 Oscars. And just to make sure this wasn't just a Siri issue, I did a side by side with Google Gemini and Siri asking both the same question at the same time. Can you generate a list of films released in 2025 that are generating lots of buzz as highly likely best picture nominees so that I can watch them in the lead up to the 2026 Oscars? Use chat GPT. As you can see, Gemini nailed the request first go, whereas Siri via ChatGPT straight up recommended me fake films that have never existed, as well as films that were released back in the 20th century. And it did this on more than one occasion too. So all that being said, Siri is just absolutely nowhere near where Apple would like it to be. And they've even come out and said as such, I just think the biggest shock about this is how long it's taken for them to fix it. Now, there are obviously other issues, both with iOS in general, but also with iOS 26 more specifically, like there's been some issues related to battery drain. There's also been some connectivity issues, which has actually been a pretty big deal on my wife's iPhone 16 Pro just recently, but it's now fixed. But there's obviously other bugs and glitches that other users have encountered since the stable update was pushed, but these do tend to feel much more like bugs rather than persistent iOS related issues. So I have some confidence that Apple will sort these out themselves, rather than needed to list them all here in this video. And so that's it. That is everything that I think Apple needs to improve with iOS going forward. If I missed anything, either in this video or the previous, then definitely add it in the comments and then keep an eye out for the full review of the iPhone 17 Pro because it'll be up on the channel very soon. And once it's up, I'll link it in the cards. Aside from that, if you enjoy the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.